Hello everybody, my name is Rodan Studios, and today we are back again for another uh, pixel art tutorial. And today we are going to cover uh, shading in pixel art, as well as hue shifting. Now, stick around for the shading part, but for the, uh, the whole hue shifting part, it's not as important, but it's just a way to make your shading more, uh, like stand out more. So let's get started. Uh, so first I'm going to show you four main types of shading and then I'm going to show you hue shifting on each single one. So let's get started. Uh, our first example is hard shading or hard shadows. Essentially you use around three colors maybe even less and the the whole object or the whole point to hard shading is just to define your shape. So <clears throat> if we fill it in all of this we would just have a circle but once we add shadows to it even if it's just a, a single shadow it looks more like a sphere if we add a, a highlight to it now it looks more like a sphere so essentially the whole point is just to define the shape with as little shades as possible and that's it so let's get on to the next one which is soft shadows and with this, uh, it's basically the same thing as the first one, except you can use a, like a lot more shades for it. Now, the main difference between these two is that the hard shadows is more used for uh, very low resolution pixel art, whereas the soft shadows is more so used for uh, kind of high resolution. So. I guess this one would be more like 16 and lower, maybe 32 and lower. I'd say 32 and lower. And uh, unless it's something like Castlevania or something like that, where it's very uh, high resolution on a low scale. Uh, soft shadows, on the other hand, are more so for games that are 64 and up, I would say. So anyways, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one, I wouldn't really recommend using uh, unless it's you're using a program that's kind of like unity or something like that uh, essentially this is for very high resolution pixel art uh, but even then you can see it works perfectly fine on this circle or on the sphere and it still defines the shape very well uh, and yeah so this is more so used for games of actual lighting engines and stuff uh, where you actually want to get like a very high amount of detail but again, I wouldn't recommend this for, for low resolution, mostly because you have to go back and edit this, and uh, by doing this you would lose all your colors and you would have to erase the gradient every single time. Uh, let's move on to our next one. This one is called Dittering. I, I think I pronounced that right. Hopefully I did. Uh, it's a very hard technique to learn, I'll tell you that. Uh, essentially what you do is you shade using patterns. So, uh, the most common pattern is this little checkerboard pattern right here, and you just kind of do that. Uh, and then you kind of soften up the pattern as you go on. So as you can see, it starts off as a checkerboard here, but then it like uh, diminishes over here. And I can even like add a, a little bit of a border right there, maybe. And this is also used for uh, 32 and down I would say but again this one is is mostly common because it works so well especially with old games kind of like Pokemon where you would have a limited color palette uh, so this is good for blending colors together without actually having to create another color in general uh, and if you look from far away you can tell that it looks uh, perfectly 3d so let's move on to our next four which are basically the first three but modified uh, and the only real difference is that I, I shifted the colors a bit so as you can see this green right here and this green right here are the exact same color but if you look closely the shadow and the highlights are different colors now the way I did this is well uh, I grabbed the, the main color so the green and that's our midtone and for the shadow what I did is I went 
uh, up the hue scale. So yellow is usually your sunlight color, so that's your brightest color. So essentially, if you want the color to be brighter, you should work towards yellow. If you want it to be darker, you want to work away from yellow. So let's say green. Uh, that's right next to yellow. So if you want to get it brighter, you have to move towards yellow. Uh, if you want to get it away, like darker, you want to work more towards blue. So all I did was I shifted the shadow or the value down. And then I just moved the, the hue more towards the blue section it creates this nice color uh, it's almost the exact same thing that I have so as you can see it creates that and honestly it just makes the the whole sprite look more interesting uh, and it stands out a lot more as you can see it stands out more than this one so on to our next one uh, same thing uh, the difference for this one is that I I had the midtone shifted more upward right here and I went lower increments, so I went down by, I think, 10 for value and hue. For this one, I went by 30 or 15. I can't remember. Uh, this one, same concept. I just chose my midtone and then selected the other color to be uh, this really dark tone or hue tone. And I just used a gradient, and this is the exact same thing. So, as you can see, there are four main types of uh, shading in pixel art. I'm, I know there's a couple more that I haven't covered. Uh, there's definitely like very detailed uh, ways of shadowing and, and stuff. But these are the main four that you'll see most commonly. Uh, and they're hue shifting counterparts. So I hope this helped. Uh, in case you didn't grasp the whole hue shifting concept, uh, I'll be happy to explain it to you in the comments if you need it, and thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.